Hey, Matt Allen here with Tactical Bassin. Welcome back. It's been a little while since I've shot a true instructional video. I thought it was time to get back to the basics and talk to you guys about details on how we're catching fish. More than just showing you videos of us catching fish, but how we're doing it, breaking down some tips, some ideas. I thought the best way to start that would be with the Alabama rig. You know, it's been about a year now since this thing busted wide open on the market. And a year's a lot of time. A year is enough time to get out, fish a bait, and really get a feel for how it works, why it works, what needs to be tweaked, what can be left stock, and really work out the kinks of the system. And I feel like I've done that. So now that a year has passed, I've got some experience. I felt like it was time to really sit down with you guys and break down the, the Alabama rig or the umbrella rig and talk about why and how I do the things that I do with it, uh, what modifications need to be made, etc. So let's jump in there. Uh, first thing I want to cover is just equipment. When the Alabama rig hit the market, everybody was using the stoutest rods possible. I did the same thing. I started out with big swim bait rods and I've gotten away from that. Um, I've gone to really some pretty soft rods. The rod I'm throwing it on is a Dobbins 784. Uh, what that is, that's a 7 foot 8 four power rod. So not a giant rod, a four power rod. It's a jig rod. Uh, a long, slow tapering jig rod. That's what I'm throwing my five and seven wire rigs on. I use a Corrado 200 that, uh, you know, just a, a typical reel. I use braid just like I do for every other technique. 50 to 65 pound braid. And then I'm using a 20 pound mono leader in front of that rig. Uh, you know, I had somebody ask just the other day why I use a mono leader. You know, you got this bait, it's, it's covered in wires. Why should having a leader on that braid make a difference? And I really believe it does. I feel that since I started using a leader rather than tying direct to my braid, I started catching bigger fish. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why I think that is. Of course, I'm not a scientist. These are my theories as a bass fisherman, my personal theories. But what I believe is going on is if you're fishing an A-Rig in deep water, I don't think it matters one bit whether or not you're fishing straight braid. And the reason has everything to do with line angle. So I've got my rig and I've got the line out in front. If I'm fishing deep water, that line is turned way up high as that thing comes through the water. And I believe that the first thing the fish see is the rig, the bait's on the rig, and they just hone in on it. But if you fish shallow water, and I fish a lot of shallow water, the shallower the water you fish, the more that line angle levels out with the bait. And I believe, based on what I've seen, I mean visibly seeing fish in clear water, that if I'm fishing straight braid and it's shallow, so my line is directly in front of that rig, there are bass that see the braid and panic. They, they head out for deeper water before they ever even notice the rig is there. So if you're fishing shallow water, I really think that leader makes a big difference in not spooking those fish before they actually see the rig and see the baits and hone in on it. So that's my theory. Uh, you may not agree, that's okay, but I know that when I started tying a leader on these things, I started catching a lot more fish over seven pounds. And you know, I should also add right there, when this rig got going, I was not a, a huge fan um, I didn't think a whole lot of it, but after this year, going a full 12 months, it took me a little while to figure out how to fish it. Really, just to simplify it, I was complicating it. Once I simplified it, it started working really well. I have caught a ton of big fish on this rig. So have my clients. I mean, I don't know how many clients I have that got fish over 7 pounds on the rig this year. It's a phenomenal way to target bigger bass. So what I wanted to do with you today is break down the specifics of these rigs. There are a lot of great companies on the market. Lots of people are making good rigs. There are a ton available at Tackle Warehouse. Uh, and I should add, if you're watching this on tacticalbassin.com, down at the bottom of the post, there are links to the specific products that I'm using. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, in the video description, there'll be a link there over to Tackle Warehouse where you can see the rigs. Uh, the particular brand that I throw a lot of is Frenzy Baits. Uh, this particular brand you actually have to buy direct. Uh, but there are a lot of really good rigs on the market. 
So whatever it is that you use, that's great. Uh, what I like about Frenzy is I can throw a five or a seven wire uh, and they offer them both skirted and non-skirted. And I like the skirt. I think it just helps break up the overall pattern of the rig. So jumping into a five wire rig, let's talk about the details of, of what I'm doing this or what I'm doing with this rig to tweak it once I open the package because I'm not taking them out of the package and fishing them. Uh, if you're a finesse guy, if you're fishing for generally small fish, I think as a rule of thumb, you can open up a package, pull out the rig, hang some baits on it, and go to town. That's actually how, how this one's set up because I was fishing a lake the other day that doesn't have a lot of big fish in it. So I just opened it up, stock, uh, stock hardware, stock snaps, no big deal, pretty light hooks on the rig, and I just go out and fish it. But if I'm going to a place with bigger fish, I don't trust stock hardware on anything. That's A-rigs, that's crankbaits, swim baits, I don't care. I don't like snaps. I don't like most stock hardware. I think it's too light. So I change my stuff out. And let's go over that. The first thing I do, I fish three big baits. Now I'm in California where we're only allowed three hooks. If you're allowed five hooks, more power to you. Put all the same bait on and just pound some fish. But for us, I put three baits on the bottom that are bigger, two baits on the top that are smaller. Now I know they're not all there right now. I'm gonna change some of these out for you and show you how I do this. But that's the way I fish it. Three, three big baits on the bottom, two little baits on the top. The fish naturally target the bigger baits low and in the back, the ones with the hooks in it. So that's how I make sure that I'm not getting bit on these little baits up top. So first thing, let's talk about the little baits, the teasers. When you get the rig, everything's rigged the same. So you got your wire, swivel, and then a snap. I'm not a fan. What I do on these teasers is I take a pair of snippers and I take that split or that, uh, that snap and that swivel, I just cut it off clean. It's gone. Then what I do is I, I'm using owner, uh, but anything like this, just a centering pin, a screw lock, I take my screw lock and I put it on that wire direct, not on a swivel. The reason why is if you put it on a swivel, that little teaser bait is just going to spin like a spinner bait blade. You don't want it to do that. You want it to kick like a swim bait. So you take that swivel out of the equation, you put that screw lock directly on the wire, and then I'm using the, on this one, the Kitek swing impacts, uh, fat swing impacts. For the, for the teasers, I use the 3.8. For the main baits, I use the 4.8. The other bait that I like is uh, the Reaction Innovation Skinny Dipper. Pretty generic bait. I mean, none of these are, are super expensive baits, which is nice. So I take that little skinny, or excuse me, that little Kitek, that 3.8 fat swing impact, and I just twist it on to that screw lock. And what I do is I make sure that when it's twisted all the way on that it's lined up even with the head of the bait because it can't spin anymore so it's got to be lined up right that way when they come through the water those baits are kicking naturally and they're not spinning now down on the bottom same thing they come with the swivel they come with the snap depending on the particular brand of hardware you go with that swivel may or may not be good. On these frenzy baits that I'm throwing, it's a good swivel. So what I do on those is I just cut off the snap. I hate snaps. Snaps are just one more thing to open up and go wrong. I like split rings. So again, I'm using an owner hyperwire split ring. I'm not an owner pro staff or anything. I just think that, especially the hyperwire split rings, these things are sweet. They're really, really good. So I take my split ring pliers. I grab that split ring and I take that swivel because again I left the swivel I just cut off the snap and I put that split ring on that swivel so now I'm set up instead of having snaps I've got a split ring then I take that larger Kitek a 4.8 color of your choice doesn't matter it just depends on your lake I'm using the dirty jig swim bait heads comes in a finesse and then a little bit heavier hook I like the heavier hook most of the time. If you're a northern guy, you might like the finesse. It's up to you. But again, I'm fishing for bigger fish. 
So I like that stouter hook. I take that swim bait head and I just thread it onto that Kitec. Poke it through. And this particular keeper system, the wire style keeper, once that's pushed all the way up, what you do to really get that bait to stay is you take toothpicks and poke it through at those wires and then break them off on both sides. And then that thing is so snug. But I take that swim bait back to that split ring. You need a good set of split ring pliers. Really saves your, your fingernails. And I'll just thread that swim bait onto that split ring. And again, this was trial and error getting started with this stuff. I started out trying to fish them with stock hardware. You start losing big fish. You figure out pretty quick what you need to change and what you can leave. So this now is a bulletproof umbrella rig. I go from wire on the bottom. I've got swivels so that these baits can, can turn and balance themselves out and, and line up and swim properly. And I've got my Dirty Jake swim bait heads out to my Kitec baits or my Skinny Dippers, the Reaction Innovations, whatever you prefer. On the top, wire, no uh, attachment of any, any kind, just straight to that screw lock, that centering pin, and the bait so that they don't spin because they're not weighted. They don't have a head to keel them out, so they'll just naturally want to just spin and spin and spin. That's my rig. That's how I fish it. Skirted or unskirted, personal preference. But that's the way I do it. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the seven wire rig. Now, I don't have baits on this one, but I wanted to talk to you about this one really quickly. Give you another pointer that you may have never considered. The seven wire rigs are great. Still, I use three hooks, right? I've got four little wires, three long wires, bigger baits on the three long wires, little baits on the four wires. And you can fish that rig. It's just a bigger school, a bigger presence, especially in murky water. It seemed to make a big difference for me last spring. But here's an approach that you may never have heard anybody talk about. I take the same seven wire rig, but instead of fishing seven baits, I'm only going to fish five. Just like you see the five wire rig set up. I set it up the exact same way, but there's two extra wires. What I do with those two extras is I take them just like this and I bend them straight down in front of the head, straight down. What that does, I don't put baits on them at all. I leave them blank. In fact, I cut the hardware off, just leave the bare wires. When you're fishing around rock, wood, any sort of cover where your Alabama rig is going to want to hang up, it's going to get stuck because the head itself is very small. What are we talking about? A quarter inch by way less than an eighth of an inch, sixteenth inch wide, quarter inch tall. That's a small point to get snagged in the rocks and get stuck. When I take these wires and I bend them straight down, now when you go to fish rock or wood, the head of the bait is no longer a quarter inch tall. It's now five inches tall. That is so much harder to get stuck. It'll hit and then it'll want to ride up and over the snags. It takes 80% of the snags out of fishing rock. So I'm taking that seven wire rig, but I fish it like it's a five wire, five baits, but it becomes, I'm not gonna say snag proof, but it becomes much more snag free if you fish it with those two wires down, present a larger front on that bait so that it doesn't dig in and wedge itself into tight spots. That'll make a big difference for you. So, you know, in conclusion, there are a lot of great rigs out there. There are a lot of different people doing different things. Some guys still won't throw a rig. Other guys swear by them. It's up to you whether or not you're going to fish a rig. It's up to you whether you want a five wire or a seven wire, the baits you want to put on it. But if you're going to fish a rig, these are the things that are working for me. This is how I'm putting bigger fish in the boat. I had a phenomenal year on the A-Rig. We're coming back into that season. The bait fish across the country are moving up shallow. They're balling up. The bass are starting to chase them. That's the time that this thing just starts to kill them. So think about it. 
I hope this helps you. I hope it helps you put some bigger fish in the boat. Have a good evening.